As we drift through the water, Cortana gives us some exposition about the prophet of regret. Basically, his messages are begging the others to forgive him for moving against Earth too soon. He didn't expect any human presence, and now he wants to come home. As Cortana says, it's weird that a prophet would have such lousy intel. At this point, we're not discussing the implications of that. The elevator lands and you start battling your way into where regret is holed up. You have a couple of marines with you, but they're mostly there to keep shooting stuff after you kill it. I can't see it! Okay, sometimes they're useful. You meet a pair of hunters, but they're not too hard to deal with. Especially when this happens. I know it's cheating. Like all buildings in the future, this one is a bloody maze. Finding your way through takes way too long, but eventually you get to another elevator. So we take the one to get down here, wherever here is, then we take this one to get back up. Right. During this ride, we learn that Regret got an answer from his counterpart, the Prophet of Truth. Truth is pissed because Regret's actions threaten to screw the whole plan. That you shall be spared a public display of our contempt is thanks only to Mercy and his wise counsel. Truth, Mercy, Regret. Three Prophet Hierarchs. Killing Regret should shake up the Covenant leadership, but frankly, it sounds like you might be doing Truth a favor. Call me naive, but I'd think if these guys were really prophets for some higher entity, they wouldn't be at each other's throats. But then, what do I know? That guy was one of those honor guard that Cortana mentioned. That should mean we're getting close. Regret, basically being your average TV preacher, can't get enough of the sound of his own voice, even recorded. Every member of the Covenant shall walk the path. None will be left behind when our great journey begins. That is the Prophet's age-old promise, and it shall be fulfilled! Great journey? Doesn't he know what these rings do? Actually, yes, he does. All three Prophets do. Mass extinction via the Halo Rings is what they call this great journey. So basically, this great journey is death. I think I'll skip this one. Fight on through and you come to yet another gondola. Seriously? Cortana says it looks like this one leads to the main temple. So what was all that other stuff? And why were there honor guards that far away from the prophet? I'll tell you. I don't know. Oops. Sorry about that, Marine. But I give you a 9.6 on the backflip. I lost both my marines at this point, so from here I went on solo. Of course, another gondola comes at you from the opposite direction, but now we're getting serious. There's a couple of banshees that you have to take out, then you get a bunch of these flying elites. It's a pretty heady battle. It's even headier if your aim is as lousy as mine, which I'm sure you can see here. Of course, there's heavy defenses at the other end. I was down to this one remaining grunt on that mounted gun. Really? That was a perfect shot in his breathing tank. Why didn't it have any effect? Well, okay, if the sniper rifle isn't tough enough. Then I'll just have to find something that is. Further inside, there's more honor guard, but you finally reach him. Regret rides around on this anti-gravity chair thing that includes a fuel rod cannon like the hunters use, and he can zip around pretty good on it. The best thing to do is to get him quickly, because otherwise catching him could take all day. I was mashing the button at least three times as fast as Master Chief was responding. But as it turns out, Regret is unusually squishy. It only takes three or four hits to kill him. Now it's time to get out of here, because on the way in, we saw the biggest Covenant fleet anybody's ever seen, and they're all headed straight for us. They're hell-bent on destroying the whole place if it'll take out the demon. There's only one thing to do, and Master Chief does it.
Is this going to start getting weird? We've gotten this far without getting weird. Well, at least no weirder than the Flood. But now we have a talking octopus? The Arbiter returns to high charity and learns that the elites have been fired. The Brutes are replacing them as the Prophet's caretakers. Your commander is not happy. This is unprecedented. Unacceptable. A hierarch is dead, Commander. But that's good, right? He's already started on the great journey. Isn't that what you wanted? His murderer was within our grasp. If you had not withdrawn our phantoms... Are you questioning my decision? No, Holy One. I only wish to express my concern that the Brutes... Recommissioning the Guard was a radical step. But recent events have made it abundantly clear that the Elites can no longer guarantee our safety. Okay. One has to assume that these three have been running things for a very long time, probably since before the war with Earth. So, before the war, who did they need protecting from, and why? And if they're prophets, shouldn't they have seen this coming? Of course, we saw how cowed everyone is before them, so at least we know why nobody in high charity is asking these questions. The Arbiter isn't happy, but the guys in the funny clothes have another task for him. Head to the newly discovered Halo and get the Index from it before the humans do. With Tartarus, that head brute with the big hammer, he heads off to retrieve what they call the Sacred Icon. There's a shield around the library, so your first task is to disable it. That's how you get around? Who designed this place, Willy Wonka? Why, having fun? Without warning and for no apparent reason, sentinels appear and start shooting at you. Turns out there's things on the walls that build them, so if you take those out, you don't have to deal with as many. Of course, that doesn't even begin to answer the question, why are they shooting? They're supposed to be programmed to deal with a flood outbreak. They should just be ignoring the Arbiter since he isn't bothering anything. But I think we all know the answer. There's nothing else around at the moment to shoot at us. And we can't just walk into a place without something shooting at us. It just isn't done in polite society. So the Sentinels will have to do for now. We wouldn't want to commit a breach of etiquette. And suddenly you have a squad of grunts and jackals with you. The first time I did this, I mistook them for enemies and killed a couple of them. But if you can avoid being a dipwad, they can come in handy. Depending on your definition of handy, a few more of those piston type things. Who dreamed this place up? And how do you get back up? Let it go, let it go. And you get to the controls. There are four of these big locks and you have to overload them to bring down the shield. But it's guarded by this thing. This is basically a sentinel on steroids. It has some pretty nasty firepower and it also has a shield on its front. So you have to get around behind it to take it out. You take down the shield and that starts the platform that you're on moving toward the library. Of course, no way it's that easy. Even with Tartarus and his phantom, it's a massive battle against the various sentinel machines and of course the flood starts showing up. How they got loose is anybody's guess because these installations are supposed to contain them and keep this from happening. But I guess if it happens to one, it happens to all of them or something like that. Because in the first game, they got loose because both the Covenant and Captain Keys accidentally destroyed their containment. What happened here? Who destroyed the containment in this place? Of course, there's no time to think about all that because they're coming like, well, like a flood. I really didn't want to do it, it just sort of happened. The ride takes forever plus 20 minutes and there's plenty of fighting along the way. You get to where you have to hop off and go through a bunch more pistons and stuff like that, of course with flood everywhere. Where'd they get the bodies to- Let it go! Let it go! In the first game, the Monitor made fun of our inferior weapons because they're projectile weapons, not beams like the Sentinels use. So in this game we get to use the Sentinel beams. And you know what? I don't find them even remotely as efficient for dealing with the flood as the shotgun. For one thing, in this game, you'll see those little spores come around and reanimate bodies if you don't break them up enough. 
The shotgun does that, the sentinel beam doesn't. And that's just one example. The only true advantage I can see to the sentinel beams is there's plenty of them. There's limited ammo for the shotgun, so may as well just go with it when you can. Eventually, you come out at some kind of dock where you meet another of these things. Check out the little guy. The closer you get to the library, the more you hear human communications. Johnson is trying to hold off the flood while Commander Keyes goes for the index. They're having as much luck as you are so far. You go down a couple more of those super slides and come out to... Huh? What? We have to get across this, whatever it is. There were a couple of open areas on Halo in the first game, but I have no idea what I'm looking at here. It looks more like a wasteland. Don't you dare! Maybe the flood already destroyed everything, I don't know. Some more elites drop in to help you battle your way to the library. They're really helpful to have around. The captain shows up with more elites to help you, and you start into the building that houses the library. For this, we have a new vehicle called a Spectre. You know, ghost, phantom, wraith, Spectre. Do the Covenant have a death fetish going on here? Then again, considering what they want to do with the rings, maybe I already know the answer to that. The Spectre is a small, versatile vehicle with a mounted gun on it. So you hop in your not warthog and head on in. There may be a small camera problem here. You have a couple of elites with you driving ghosts, and that's good because now you're not only battling the flood, you're dealing with sentinels too. Why? Because game, that's why. Don't ask too many questions. Along the way, we discover that the Flood has learned to drive. How did that happen? This is called the Hundred Thousand Years War, so is that how old a Flood has to be to get their license? How did they learn... what? Let it go! Let it go! They grabbed a couple of ghosts, so we have a running battle. We also encounter this. I don't know if that was Flood or humans operating that tank, and I know, since I'm the Arbiter, I'm supposed to favor the total extermination of both. But I gotta admit, that hurt. Too bad I couldn't commandeer it instead. Oh well. Onward to the Sacred Icon! Whoa. As you can see, I was using a ghost by this time. It's a lot more maneuverable. Okay, this is basically the courtyard of the building where the index is, right? Who the heck puts a gigantic bottomless pit in a place like that? Oh, right. And apparently this isn't the building because you go through that and come out into another area just like the previous one. I'm starting to think it's time for the padding song. This part, just like the library level in the first game, is way too long and way too repetitive. If you like basic run-and-gun games that have very little to do with any concept of story, this is the level for you. Further on, you find yourself battling sentinels in the seventh circle of hell. After you finish your penance in this surrogate purgatory, you come out to another open area and do some stuff. Boring. The color scheme is so flat it's often impossible to tell what's a flood and what's background clutter. Is there any chance we can get to the freaking library today? 
Finally, you reach a platform where you have to ride yet another gondola. But you have company. More humans. They must be after the icon. On your way, Arbiter. I'll deal with these beasts. Naturally, the gondola ride takes long enough for you to have to deal with who knows how many waves of floods, sentinels, and all the rest. There's a shotgun on this thing, but really, the energy sword works just as well on the flood. and I think it's more fun to use. Your mileage may vary. When the ride finally ends, we find ourselves in... Oh no. The last time we were in this place, we were there for freaking ever. Even with the monitor guiding us, it was way too easy to get lost because what kind of psychotic imbecile builds a place like this? What is all this crap for? And how the frell am I supposed to find my way through it this time without any kind of guide? Shoot me now if you have to, but please don't make me go through this place again! So you wander around this place like a blind dog in a meat packing plant until you finally give up, get drunk, and go to bed. Wait, that's not right. Oh yeah, this time it's a fairly short trip, and soon enough you come upon Miranda getting the index. You know, your father never asked me for help either. The index is secure. I'm a big fan of Agent Coulson, but I gotta admit, he's got nothing on Sergeant Johnson. Sarge discovers that his Marines aren't answering their radios, so he and Keyes begin a careful exit. Enter the Arbiter. How you doing? Sergeant, stay down! Johnson, you all right? Johnson! Excellent work, Arbiter. The Hierarchs will be pleased. Uh, how did Master Monkey get there so quick? And isn't this supposed to be the Arbiter's job? Why is he taking charge? The Icon is my responsibility. What's your responsibility? Now it is mine. Says who? A bloody fate awaits you and the rest of your incompetent race. And I, Tartarus, Chieftain of the Brutes, and I, Jack, the Pumpkin King, will send you to it. When the prophets learn of this, they will take your head. When they learn. <laughs> Fool. They ordered me to do it. Oh, that's who. Why? Funny how there's always a yawning abyss nearby when you need one. We're back to Master Chief somewhere in that same yawning abyss. Squidly Diddly's big brother has him in a tentacle lock. What is that? I... I am a monument to all your sins. Well, thanks for clearing that up. This thing drags the Arbiter in next to Chief and makes them both listen to his bad poetry. <laughs> this one is machine and nerve, <laughs> and has its mind concluded. <laughs> This one is but flesh and faith, and is the more deluded. Oh, frizzled grunt family. It produces a couple of surprise guests. Greetings. I am 2401 Penitent Tangent. <laughs> How high were you guys when you came up with those names? And I am the Prophet of Regret, Counselor Most High 
High Rock of the Covenant! We beat him to death up on the surface. How'd he get here and why is he still alive? The Monitor sees Master Chief and wants to fire the ring immediately. Regret says no. Why? Nothing can be done until my sermon is complete! Of course. It's always fun to watch two individuals talk right past each other. Of all the objects our lords left behind, there are none so worthless as these oracles! They know nothing of the great journey! And you know nothing about containment! You have demonstrated complete disregard for even the most basic protocols! The monster explains why the prophets are so wrong, but the Arbiter won't hear it. So the thing says it'll show him. They're supposed to search for a key of some kind, and he sends them both off to do just that. We cut to High Charity, where there's a near riot going on because everybody's terrified of the Flood. Truth is trying to explain why this is a good thing, but I'm not sure anybody's listening. This brings us to my favorite scene in the entire Halo franchise. Not even the Flood can stop it. <laughs> you get a nice battle with a few grunts, and we face brutes for the first time. The Needler does a nice job of taking them out. They don't have shield generators, but take them out before... It's berserking! Berserking? Anytime you face a group of brutes in this game, the last one left will do this. Basically, he quits shooting and starts running around like an idiot. Somewhere along the way, I started calling this crazy monkey and it stuff. Just go with it. The Covenant Carbine does a nice job on him, too. Gotta love the way they fall. Once you're done with them, Cortana does what she does best. Be hot and beautiful. I mean, hack into Covenant systems. That Prophet, Truth, he has the Index. You've got to take it from him. Let me get these doors. Go. It'll be easier to track Truth if I stay in the network. I assume the Index is the key that thing was talking about. So let's go get it. Oh, by the way, another good way to take out a brute? A good old-fashioned rabbit punch. We learn that the Brutes have their own particular weapons, like their own version of the plasma rifle, and a grenade launcher called a Brute Shot. Truth is moving through the lower levels of the tower. I'll reverse this grav lift. Drop down, try to cut him off. It's safe, really. Just step in. Covenant architecture is weird. If you're not sure where to go, look for a pedestal with Cortana standing on it. She's the hottest tour guide you'll ever have. We will hunt you Beet encrusted arugula? I've been watching too many cooking shows. Cortana discovers that two groups of marines are being held in cells somewhere around here, so you go off to rescue them. I guess Tartarus captured all the marines, not just Sarge and Commander Keys. You have to wonder why he didn't just kill him. Because he knew Master Chief would need them for this mission, of course. You know, the worst part is, that actually makes sense. Sort of. You fight your way to the different cells, take out the guards, and lead the Marines on a mission to get the Index back. Listen up, Marines. The Chief's hunting a prophet, and you're gonna help him kill it. Uh, that too. Right. Actually, I hadn't heard about the killing part. Maybe they had that part of the briefing when I stepped out to pee. <laughs> Hold on, were they fighting each other? Every so often we hear a comment from Truth about how the Elites failed to protect him, so now it's the Brutes' turn, blah, blah, blah. But it looks like the Elites aren't taking too kindly to it. As we go further, we realize we've walked into the middle of a full-on civil war. We have Jackals with beam rifles shooting at Hunters, Brutes and Elites killing each other. Maybe we should just go home. Now that they're all occupied with each other, maybe they'll leave us alone. As if. In true game fashion, no matter how much they want to kill one another, they all want to kill you. So just keep moving and keep fighting.
may I just say, I want one of those. I don't know where I'll put it or what I'll use it for, but it seems like a thing I need to have. During this battle, I learned one other very important thing about this game and about Xbox 360 play in general. Remember to change the batteries in your wireless controller. If you don't, that's what happens. Moving on. It's often hard to decide how much to put in these reviews and how much to comment on. As you know, I don't post actual Let's Play videos. Considering my distinctive lack of skill at this stuff, if I did just do Let's Play, you'd be bored out of your skull and quit watching. For example, I wound up doing this particular sequence no less than five times, mostly because I'm a klutz. Who wants to watch that? You encounter more of these cool bridges as you continue on after the Prophet and the Sacred Icon, and I still want one. Maybe two. My house does have two doors. As you go along, the fight between the Brutes and the Elites seems to be heating up big time. You might consider sitting this one out. Good advice. As Napoleon said, never interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. As you sit there watching, somebody in the audio department decides to try and make it more interesting. I tried to sneak around and get through the room without being spotted while they kill each other, but a couple of brutes spotted me. Ignore the fact that I didn't have the good sense to switch to a closer range weapon. The problem here is that I can't see. Between the crappy lighting and the fact that everything in this whole place is all the same color, I have no idea where these critters are. I tried to move into the light, but they still blend in with the background, so I can't track them. Eventually, you do get through here because you're the hero. Next step. Hang on. I'm picking up two more transponders. It's the Commander and Johnson. They're closing on Truth's position, Chief. They'll need your help. You think? While all this was happening, Cortana picked up Commander Key's ship, the in amber clad, because it looks like a mosquito maybe, crashing into the city. No human life signs aboard. This is not good. As you near the end of your track, she gets confirmed reports of flood leaving the wreckage and moving through the city. Oh crap. But it could always be worse. Split them. One in each phantom. One in each phantom, because if you let them together, they'd have you surrounded. I can see my house from here. The hopes of all the Covenant rest on your shoulders, Chieftain. My faith is strong. I will not fail. I will not fail. Not even the Parasite could prevent me. Oh, crap. Let him be. The great journey waits for no one, brother. Not even you. So first he betrays the Arbiter, now he betrays and abandons his own fellow prophet. I'm beginning to think he's maybe not such a nice boy. I get the feeling he's driven by blind ambition. But ambition for what? The idea is to kill everybody, himself included. So what's he gaining by eliminating the others? I have no idea. Then again, he is blind stinking crazy, so maybe he doesn't have to make sense. Self-appointed prophets rarely do. We see the Arbiter materialize on a hill somewhere. You become him and discover that the Brutes have slaughtered the entire elite council and appear to be on a campaign of total extermination. Again, I have to wonder why. They should know that this great journey is supposed to incinerate them all, so what's the point of fighting with each other? What are they fighting over? Whatever it is, the Brutes seem to be doing a good job of it because there are dead elites everywhere. By the prophets, what have these Brutes done? They have shed our brother's blood, and for that they must die. Again, won't the great journey take care of that? I guess not, because we're off to kill monkeys. I'll kill the wabbit! No, not wabbits. The issue here ain't pussy. The issue here is monkey. Thank you. May we proceed? There's some grunts. Oh, they're on our side. What's he shooting at? 
Oh, jackals and a brute. So we got the grunts and the brutes got the jackals. I'm not sure who got the worst end of that deal. Further on, we discover they also got the drones. But later, we'll get the hunters, so I think all in all, we came out ahead. We move along, killing brutes and jackals. Not shoots and ladders, brutes and jackals. You know, that may well be the dumbest joke I have ever done. At one point, I got to demonstrate my prowess with a grenade. Very few people can kill a dead enemy like I can. Sometimes I get a live enemy, too, so there. There's no real significance to that clip. I just really like doing that with those plasma grenades. A little further on, you get to grab a ghost. And just about that time, I started getting this. I'm really not sure what that was all about, but it kept happening every so often. Technology's great when it works. It's pretty routine for a while because your only mission is to take vengeance on the brutes. With a goal like that, things are bound to get repetitive, and they do. Thing is, this is padding done right because it doesn't feel like padding. It feels like natural progression, which of course is what it is. If you need to pad some things out to make your game full length, this is the way to do it. Some of the brutes are wearing helmets, so they require an extra shot. What was that? La -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da. I don't think so. They start coming at you with wraiths and other vehicles, whereupon you learn that you can do this. In a building, I found a nice rocket launcher. Vulgar taste. Even as trophies, these weapons are worthless. Okay, let me put one of these rounds up your butt and we'll see how worthless it is. You fight on until you meet up with the captain again, then we're back to Master Chief. Remember how Truth left his buddy behind to get eaten? Your pal. Where's he going? Uh, any hardly started. And this time, none of you will be left behind. So after all that, he still... Well, of course he does. Why would I think otherwise? That structure in the center of the city, it's a forerunner ship. So that's an actual ship. Funny, it doesn't look like one at all with that streamlined spaceship type shape and everything else. And Truth is heading straight for it. If he leads the Covenant fleet to Earth, they won't stand a chance. You have to stop him. That brute has the Index. And Miranda and Johnson. He can activate the ring. If he does, I'll detonate in Amberclad's reactor just like we did the Autumns. The blast will destroy this city and the ring. Not a very original plan, but we know it'll work. No, I don't want to chance a remote detonation. We need to stay here. Stay behind? No! I feel so alone. You have to fight through a Kabillion flood to get back inside and get to a passage that'll take you to the ship. Cortana discovers that the grave mine called Flood from all over... somewhere... to come to the city and take the Enamber clad. Why? Really? I'm not sure yet. You also run into brutes, because they're too stupid to realize we're all on the same side against the Flood now. But that's Irving's Law number 2, as you already know. Then you come to this. designs a place like that, and why? If the goal is to get across the room, just build a bridge! I wonder whose brother-in-law got that municipal contract. We still have all the Flood favorites. The humanoid ones, the ones that look like they probably used to be elites, the spores, and the wobbling wigglers. The graphics are a lot better than before, of course, and you can really see just how ugly these things are. This is called improvement. Thanks so much. Speaking of seeing, let me show you my biggest gripe with this level. 
noble masters here, my son. Wise counsel. I can't see a thing. The whole thing happens in the dark, and my flashlight is about as useful as this thing. The entire level is like that, so if your eyes are as bad as mine, brace yourself. By the way, did you hear Truth lie through his teeth just then? No this from a guy who calls himself Truth. I don't know why I'm not surprised. You finally make it to the conduit that'll take you to the ship. There's a bunch of flood around, but you don't have time to fiddle with them. You hop in and go. I have to stay here, Chief. Wait! I dialed the wrong coordinates on the Stargate! Okay, 9.6 for the jump, 2.3 for the landing. For a brick, he flew pretty good. Go make a girl a promise. If you know you can't keep it. Oh, trust me, my love, he'll keep it. We cut back to the Arbiter and the Captain, outside a locked chamber where the icon is supposed to be consecrated. Translation, put into the machine so it can fire the ring and kill everybody. If that's my only religious option, I'll become an atheist. Good thing Earth has more options, and overall, most of them are a lot less violent. As we start toward where Tartarus and the rest have the index, we finally get to drive a wraith. Really? I'll bet the Scorpion tank could have taken that easy. Kind of a weenie machine if you ask me. Your goal is an abandoned scarab, so they just leave these things sitting around anywhere? No wonder they haven't been able to conquer Earth yet. These guys are models of efficiency. You, your squad of elites, and a couple of hunters that have joined your cause, make your way into a building that's supposed to give you access to the scarab's controls. Too bad there's not a convenient catwalk to jump from. We already know that works. I'm pretty sure that took out four jackals at once. Not the Covenant's brain trust, lucky for the Covenant. As I said, you know, if I'm in that position and somebody shoots me once, my first instinct isn't to stand there and keep being a target. I'm inclined to duck. Just saying. Yeah, I know, but that was different. It was ungentlemanly to duck. To which I say, screw gentlemanly! Four doors in a row, all together, all doing absolutely nothing. You know what? I'm not even going to ask. Let's just do this. Oh, excuse me. Five doors. Further on, we meet more resistance, including one very persistent jackal. Wow. The shield was the only thing holding him up. So let's deal with the rest of the room. What? Look what that thing is. There's a room with a bunch of elites and cells. After you clear the place out, you can release them. There's got to be a control switch around here somewhere. Or that works too. With some more firepower behind you, you keep moving. You fight through to the scarab platform where you find... Listen, you don't like me and I sure as hell don't like you. But if we don't do something, Mr. Mohawk's gonna activate this ring, and we're all gonna die. Tartarus has locked himself inside the control room. Well, I just happen to have a key. Come on, grab a banshee and give me some cover. He's gonna know what's coming. So wait a minute. 
Does this mean the Arbiter doesn't believe in the Great Journey anymore? If he's still a believer, he wants Tartarus to activate the ring. That's the whole idea. I can understand him wanting to end Tartarus and the rest of the Brutes, but Johnson made it clear that his mission is to stop the Great Journey, and the Arbiter is okay with that. When did that happen? My biggest vehicle gripe in this game is the Banshee. It won't hover. Stop going forward, it drops like a frickin' rock. That's why I'm having so much trouble taking out this stationary gun, because I can't get the damn thing lined up because it won't stay up unless I'm accelerating. So doing a mission like this one is like riding a roller coaster, because you keep having to go way up in the air in order to have enough altitude to line up and hit something with your weapons, and all the while your craft is dropping like a lead balloon and you have to figure out when to pull out and roller coaster back up again. For ease of use, the Banshee is definitely the worst of the vehicles. Your Banshee will get beat up, but there are extras along the way if you need one. You make your way through the canyon, battling wraiths and specters and ghosts and goblins and things that go bump in the night with Johnson following along in the scarab, blasting the crap out of anything you might have missed. When you get there, you hold off the bad guys while Johnson blasts the door open. Time to head in. So we land here. Love what you've done with the place. Not that way. Can't get past it in this. Okay, never mind, but I can't open it to get out. Let's try this the old-fashioned way. On foot. Hoof. Whatever. It is possible to get the Banshee through there a little more, but I found it more trouble than it was worth. Especially here. Don't slip an old that's called flushing him out. I learned that playing Fear. More evidence that video games really are educational. We carve up a bunch of monkeys and head on in, where Tartarus isn't having the great day he imagined. We win. It is easy. Take the icon in your hands. And do as you are told. Please use caution. This reclaimer is delicate. One more word, Oracle, and I'll rip your eye from its socket. Um, isn't that blasphemy? These oracles are supposed to have serious mojo, right? Is threatening one really a good idea? And why aren't the other brutes reacting to that? This is supposed to be a big sacred thing, and the oracles are part of that big sacred thing, and he just threatened one, but supposedly he's this great paragon of their faith and... Don't know, I've gone cross-eyed. The Arbiter goes in and confronts Tartarus. He tries to explain how they've been deceived, but Tartarus isn't buying it. Take care, Arbiter. What you say is heresy. Is it? Oracle, what is Halo's purpose? Collectively, the seven... Wrong! Not another word! Please, don't shake the light bulb. Tartarus is the perfect example of why blind faith is really no faith at all. What's he afraid the Monitor's gonna say? So in comes Johnson with his usual great one-liner, with his beam rifle pointed straight at Tartarus's noggin. Tartarus knows that a beam rifle to the head at that range will reduce him to a quivering puddle of stupid, so he tells the brutes to back off and let the Arbiter finish. So he asks the big question, what are these rings? Weapons of last resort, built by the Forerunners to eliminate potential flood hosts, thereby rendering the parasite harmless. And those who made the rings? What happened to the Forerunners? After exhausting every other strategic option, my creators activated the rings. They and all additional sentient life in three radii of the galactic center died as planned. Would you like to see the relevant data? Tartarus, the prophets have betrayed us. Tartarus finally knows the truth. What does he do? What do you think he does? He drops to his knees, swears allegiance to the Arbiter, and offers to lead an expedition to dethrone the Prophet. I think not. No, Arbiter. The Great Journey has begun. 
and the brutes, not the elite, shall be the prophet's escort. Tartarus jumps onto the mechanism, and once the brutes are down, you and the other elites follow him. He's been carrying that BFH for the whole game, and we finally get to see what it does. Charging sequence initiated. Primary generators coming online. We'll ah. shut them down. Yeah. Ah. Then how do I stop it? Well, it will take some time to go over the procedures. Quit stalling. I would suggest that become a simple remote. That's it? Johnson, I'm on it. Hang tight, ma'am. Not until that brute is dead. I'm with Commander Keys. That's it? Well, okay then. It does make sense when you think about it. The problem now is, Tartarus also has some kind of energy shield and our weapons can't touch him. Johnson is still over on the platform, peppering Tartarus with his beam rifle, trying to take the shield down so the elites can kill him. Fortunately, he got the one beam rifle in the entire Covenant arsenal that never runs out of juice. I could have used that several times in this game. I need a bigger gun. But now I know what it looks like when his shield is down so I can watch for it. His shield is down. Let him have it. That's the first time I've ever seen a literal case of no sooner said than done. Now what? Miranda Key saves the day, with a little help from a big guy with four lips. What's that? A beacon. What's it doing? Communicating at superluminal speeds with the frequency of... Communicating with what? The other installations. Show me. Failsafe protocol. In the event of unexpected shutdown, the entire system will move to standby status. All remaining platforms are now ready for remote activation. Remote activation? From here? Don't be ridiculous. Listen, Tinkerbell, don't make me... Then where? Where would someone go to activate the other rings? Why, the Ark, of course. And where, Oracle, is that? Take a wild guess. What planet is the center of the universe? We've got a new contact. Unknown classification. It isn't one of ours. Take it out. This is Spartan 117. Can anyone hear me? Over. Isolate that signal. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. Why Earth, of course. I was gonna read you the credits as they went by, but I didn't want to spoil your fun. There's a nice little stinger after the credits. The Grave Mind is babbling some of his usual cryptic nonsense, and then... I will ask, and you will answer. All right. Shoot. If Master Chief doesn't get there quick enough, I'll save you, my love. There's plenty to like here, most notably Cortana and Johnson. I really like the Miranda Keys character, too. She's strong and tough and typical, but really, she sort of has to be considering who her dad was. I'm sure we'll see more of her. The Arbiter was interesting, but not really as well developed as I would have liked. Then again, neither is Master Chief. Say my game. There's also plenty to dislike, most notably the visuals. Flat characters against flat backdrops make a game with the visual appeal of a flat tire. I can say, spoilers, that for the most part they fixed that in the third game and beyond. So the visual problem is just a bump in the road. The Banshee behavior needs to be fixed like yesterday. But all in all, it's a good sequel. I like the new look. We got to play with some new toys, learn some new moves, and basically it moves the story forward very nicely. Next time we'll get into Halo 3. What will we be doing? Why, of course, finishing this fight. I'm Irving, and I have no life, just like you. Well, finally, Irving got three slugs in the belly. It was right outside the Frontier Deli. <laughs>
He was sitting there twirling his gun around and Butterfingers Irving gunned himself down. Irving. Big fat Irving. Big dum dum Irving. Big dum dum dead Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West. 